Hallo, wie geht's? So, this is Teil 2, Part 2 of our lessons on the past, the use of the past tense. And today we're going to deal with the conversational past, uh, das Perfekt. Uh, also called the compound past, because there's a compound way to construct compared to the simple way of just memorizing the conjugations in the preterite. Now in the preterite, we dealt with was and had, so the past tense of to be and to have, and they're irregular, and I want you guys to memorize those. Also, lernt die bitte auswendig. Präg die euch ein. Please learn them by heart. Um, I like this word, prägen. It's hard to explain exactly what it means. It's kind of like you leave an imprint of something. That's how much you occupy yourself with. That's how much you study it. Sich beschäftigen, to occupy. Sich auseinandersetzen, to occupy oneself with, to take something apart, literally. Sich etwas einprägen, to really, really learn something. That's what you got to do. It just takes repetition. So that's why we're often repeating certain things, not to be redundant and to bore you, but because you guys need the repetition. Now, back to the perfect tense. Let's go over here to our dry erase board. Das perfect. The way it is structured is you use a helper verb, an Hilfsverb, which is either to be or to have. Again, that's why these are so important. And then you add the prefix ge, although there are exceptions, you don't always do that, but most commonly your word will start with ge. And often it will also end in a t, like third person singular or participle. So, ich bin gegangen, for example. This I went. In this case, it doesn't end in a T, but ich habe gelernt. I have learned. Has both of these, the get and the T. And I don't want to get into the finer points of what determines which. There are some patterns, and there's always exceptions to the patterns, and it becomes a big spider web of things. But this is the really like essential basic formula for you guys that um, I actually never learned because I just learned to speak through speaking as a little kid. But then later when I was learning Latin and English, I had to learn all these things in school. So again, these are the form formulas, the patterns that underlie language. Don't get frustrated, guys. Try your best with this. And again, I'll try to mix in more speaking practice where you should be able to recognize these things. So, du bist gegangen. You went. Because gehen, gegangen. Oder du hast gelernt. You have learned. Let's continue with those two same examples. Er, sie, es oder Mann ist gegangen. Oder hat gelernt. Notice here again, sind for both first and third plural. Wir sind gegangen, or wir haben gelernt. Ihr seid gegangen, oder ihr habt gelernt. Sie sind gegangen, oder sie haben gelernt. So those are your two examples. We'll get into this in greater depth. But this is the basic formula right here. And if you look at the conjugation charts on Schoology that I put up for you guys to go with today's lesson, they should be reminiscent of what we just went over. Let me pull them up here. So we have das Perfect, also called conversational past, compound past, or the past perfect tense. So there's, there's so many words for these because the reason that is, is, I believe that as people were studying linguistics and, you know, syntax of language, they just came up with this nomenclature independently of another to label the same thing because that's how knowledge works. There's nothing new under the sun, guys. Everything you discover or think of, it's very likely at some point in history, somewhere in the world, someone else discovered, invented, or thought of the same thing. Although that is not always the case. Anyways, so here we have our little explanation paragraph of Deutsch, ein Verb. Wird im Deutschen dadurch ins Perfekt gestellt, 
I'm not using the passive here. Dass man beim Konjugieren von einem Hilfsverb, nämlich haben oder sein, Gebrauch macht und das Hauptverb durch das Präfix ge in den Partizip verwandelt. It's all one sentence, guys. And I'm not writing these sentences to make it tricky on you. This is actually a pretty simple sentence for German. If you guys want to learn German, you have to grow your mind because Germans are linguistically very complex beings. And there's a lesson where there will be a lesson. Es wird eine Stunde geben, in der wir uns nur einen Satz anschauen. There will be a lesson soon coming up where we're only going to examine one sentence. It's going to be a mouthful, you can imagine. But yeah, I'm trying to get you guys used to that gradually by like, you know, piecing a little bit more challenging sentences together, although the structures I'm using should be recognizable to you guys. And then, uh, what else do we have here? Bei unregelmäßigen Verben ändert sich der Stamm und sie müssen deshalb einfach eingeprägt werden. Einprägen. So, I'm using the passive voice here. You can see in the translation. Ein Verb wird gestellt. A verb is being placed. And then, sie müssen eingeprägt werden. There's your modal verb. They must be imprinted or memorized. So, yeah, imprint. That's what I was trying to explain earlier. Prägen. It's a nice word. Uh, the translation is right below it on your Schoology. And then we have our charts with sein and haben. Oh. Yeah, so one thing that I did here on Schoology that's supposed to help you guys get this idea, but maybe a little bit confusing, is I showed you guys the perfect tense of to be. So, ich bin gewesen. I am bin. Doesn't really translate. But, du bist gewesen. Er ist erst oder Mann ist gewesen. So you add, it's the same as the present tense, you just add the gewesen. That's for to be. It's very rarely used. It sounds kind of awkward, but we'll get into that in the examples momentarily. Then we have it for haben. That's why it's repetitive here. Ich habe have und ich habe gehabt. It's not I have had, it's I had. But du hast gehabt, er sie erst oder Mann hat gehabt, wir haben gehabt, ihr habt gehabt und sie haben gehabt. We add the ge and the t at the end, the stem, hab. So, back to the instructions here. Schaut euch bitte mal diese Konjugationstabellen an. Please take a gander at these charts that I'm explaining right now. Hopefully, as you're watching this, is the best way to do this. Eure Aufgabe besteht nun darin, für jede Form des Verbs sein, je eine Aussage in der Gegenwart und eine entsprechende in der Vergangenheit zu formulieren. Und auch für das Verb haben natürlich. So, your translation is right there below. Please take a look at these conjugation charts. Your assignment now consists of formulating one expression in the present and an according one in the past for each form of the verb to be and of the verb to be to have. So, zum Beispiel. Now, here we have a bunch of examples. Let's run through them real quick, and then you guys can get to it. Heute bin ich zu Hause. Gestern bin ich auch zu Hause gewesen. Today, I'm at home. Yesterday, I was also at home. And it, like I said, it sounds a bit awkward. If you're speaking to someone, you would just say, gestern war ich auch zu Hause, because it's to be. But as we get into some of these other examples here, at least the pattern should be becoming clear. Jetzt bist du endlich wach. Wo bist du denn die ganze Zeit gewesen? Hast du echt so lange geschlafen? Now you're finally awake. Where were you this whole time? Wo bist du gewesen? Where have you been? Hast du echt so lange geschlafen? Did you really sleep so long? And now you see I use the preterite and then the... 
conversational hast du geschlafen because it just sounds really weird to say schliefst du slept you did you sleep that's how we would say it in english andrew sie ist heute wieder da gestern ist sie auch da gewesen she is here again today yesterday she was also here and now you see in parentheses i wrote besser a better way of formulating this gestern war sie auch da using the preterite wir sind jetzt alle da wir sind auch beim letzten treffen alle da gewesen we're all here now we're all there now and we're also there all of us during our last meeting but a better way of saying that would be wir waren auch letztes mal alle da using the preterite Ihr seid alle sehr klug. Seid ihr das schon immer gewesen? You're all very smart. Were you always that way? Or have you always been? But a better way to say that would be, wart ihr das schon immer? Sie sind heute nicht hier. Gestern sind sie auch den ganzen Tag auf einem Meeting gewesen. Sie sind heute nicht hier. Gestern sind sie, and notice the lowercase sie means they, so yesterday, they also were at a meeting the whole day. And a better way to say it, gestern waren sie auch den ganzen Tag auf einem Meeting. Okay. Haben. Ich habe Durst. Letztes Mal habe ich auch Durst gehabt. Oder letztes Mal war ich auch durstig. I have thirst. I am thirsty. Last time, I also had thirst. I was also thirsty. Du hast die Gefahr überstanden. Du hast Glück gehabt. You survived, you withstood the threat, the danger. You have had luck. You were lucky. That's what we're saying here. But pay attention. Nicht zu verwechseln. Not to mistake with. Du warst glücklich. Glücklich sein means to be fortunate in happiness. Bist du glücklich? Are you happy? Versus, hast du Glück gehabt? Gehabt. True. Did you get lucky, like in the lottery, or do you have luck? So forth. Speaking of luck, er ist ein Glückspilz. He's a lucky mushroom. That's an idiomatic expression for a person that's very lucky. Er hat heutzutage viel Glück und früher hatte er auch viel Glück gehabt. True. See, it's very awkward to say it that way. That's why I switched to Früher hatte er auch viel Glück, the preterite. So, he's a lucky mushroom. Heutzutage, nowadays, he has a lot of luck. And Früher, and he also used to have a lot of luck. Whenever you see Früher, earlier, I wouldn't translate it literally. I would say used to, like we do in English. Normalerweise... Remember, weise, the way you do something. Normaler, normally. So, normalerweise bleiben wir nur zu Hause, wenn wir Ferien haben. Aber jetzt haben wir gerade Ferien innerhalb von Ferien gehabt. So, normally, we only stay home when we have vacation. But now, we just had vacation within vacation. Because we're stuck at home. Because of the quarantine and spring break. It was a break within a break. Habt ihr viel zu tun? Do you all have a lot to do? Nachdem ihr damit fertig seid, könnt ihr sagen, dass ihr viel zu tun gehabt habt. Oder viel zu tun hattet. Preterate. Do you have a lot to do? After you're done with it, fertig, könnt ihr sagen, you all can say, that you had a lot to do. Haben Sie einen Schlüssel für die Tür? So the question, do you, sir or ma'am, have a key to the door? And the answer, the Antwort, Nein, ich dachte, Sie haben ihn dabei gehabt. Oder besser, ich dachte, Sie hatten ihn. I thought you had him. Okay, so I hope that made sense. And you guys are following it. Again, this is just a practice exercise. 
we'll get into the finer nuances of the language. I just want you to be able to recognize and create these structures. Uh, it'll make more sense once we use other verbs, not just to be and to have. But for today's exercise, make some sentences, guys. So, one each should add up to, what is this? 12, 24. 12 sentences for to be. One in the present and one in the past each. And then 12 for to have. Also one in the present and one in the past each. Shouldn't be too hard. Again, I encourage you to look up vocab, but use your brain and these charts to follow the formula to the best of your ability. And that's it for today, guys. Das war's für heute. Am Montag, so am Monday, werden wir das um, noch üben. We're going to practice this. Um, we'll do a review of this stuff. And from then on, we're going to recycle this several times. So I hope you guys don't feel overloaded. I'm giving you a bunch of information this week. And the reason I chose to do that is because tenses make more sense together. Because one thing I wanted you to see here is the prefix we use. Ge. Where is it? Here. Ge. Ge. If you look over here in the passive, we were talking about this earlier this week. Getan. This is a similar construction here. This is the participle that's being used. Der Partizip wird hier auch gebraucht mit dem wird in the third person. So future tense, third person, with the participle, becomes the passive voice. Helper verb, sein oder haben, conjugated. So you conjugate this verb. Then you say whatever else you're going to say here. And the main verb gets a prefix get and goes all the way to the end of the sentence. This verb here is in second position, as is typically the case when we make sentences. And this one goes all the way to the end. In the preterite, this verb is in the second position, and there really isn't a second part of it. So for the perfect tense, this is the same formula that applies to separable verbs, if you guys remember. We covered those earlier in the year. Same formula. You conjugate the one thing, the other thing, the prefix, still part of the verb, goes all the way to the back of the sentence. That's it. Um, message me if you have any questions. Viel Spaß, viel Glück, schönes Wochenende. Tschüss.